Welcome everyone. Yeah, we are now going to have another speaker, um, Mr. Servin. Yeah, Servin is the CEO and founder of EcoBreaks. He was a, 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 a um, investment banker, but now he become an entrepreneur dedicated himself to developing a financial viable and scalable solution to the global plastic waste crisis and reducing the environmental damage and carbon footprint of the construction industry. He launched EcoBreak in Hong Kong as 100% circular economy solution to waste plastic that would otherwise end up in the landfill or to the ocean. His vision is to demonstrate that the dividing line between trace and valuable commodity is simply innovation. Um, today, his presentation um, title is the impact of recycled material in the construction material. So I pass the, the mic to you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Felix. And thank you for, for having me here to uh, talk about our solution and the uh, problem of um, uh, making the uh, construction industry more sustainable. Um, so um, Eddie, thank you very much for the uh, introduction to sustainability uh, in the world of concrete. Um, it's finally getting focused that it deserves uh, because as you mentioned, it's the most consumed man-made material in the world. Uh, we rely on it for every aspect of our lives from our homes to our workplaces, to our schools, to our leisure facilities, to our restaurants. Uh, it's a product that uh, we can't do without um, so the real challenge is how do we make it more sustainable um, and in, in making the cement component more um, environmentally friendly with a lower carbon footprint is fantastic. As Eddie rightly pointed out, it contributes uh, the largest proportion of um, the carbon footprint of, uh, of concrete. Um, what we've sought to do is focus on the other ingredients uh, within concrete, namely the aggregates that are used in combination with cement. Um, but before talking about the solution um, specifically, it's important to frame the actual problem. Um, carbon emissions, of course, is front and center in everyone's mind. Another major uh, environmental challenge is waste. Um, and there's a common misconception that waste and climate issues are separate and distinct. Uh, in fact, they're very much linked and interdependent. Uh, so if you look at the built environment, uh, it is the single biggest source of waste generation. Um, it's one of the biggest sources of carbon emissions and cities in particular comprise just 3% of our land mass on the planet, but contribute over 75% of total greenhouse gas emissions. Um, at the same time, the materials we use um, consume huge amounts of natural resources, and that is lime for uh, cement, that's aggregate, that's sand. Um, these natural materials are mined from the earth, heavily processed, transported over long distances. Now, all of these problems are then magnified by the, the unprecedented growth in consumption of these materials. Um, we are at the start of the largest wave of construction in the history of mankind. And to quantify that, by some estimates, there will be 2 trillion square feet of new building stock between now and 2060. And if you look at where that's going to be concentrated in terms of growth of the construction industry and hence consumption of those materials and the emissions from those uh, materials, almost half of the industry will be focused on Asia Pacific. It's growing rapidly, both in terms of population size, it's urbanizing at unprecedented rates. So there are more people living in cities where construction is a necessity, not an option. Going back to the point I made about waste and carbon emissions, waste is a climate problem. Waste is a major source of carbon emissions. Um, Hong Kong has an unenviable status in the world of having its three landfills in the top 20 carbon emitting landfills globally. And that's out of 4,498 landfills across the world. Hong Kong's three are in the top 20, totaling 5.6 million tons of CO2. 
landfills consume huge amounts of raw materials to construct. They emit huge amounts of greenhouse gases during their lifetime, and they require managing over many, many decades. So we need to reduce waste to landfill. We need to make our economies more circular. And actually, there are a lot of uh, other pressures on the building industry and the construction industry to improve their scope three impact of their processes, their supply chains, and their products, uh, both during construction, during use, and also in their post-life um, management as waste. When we look at solutions and how we can effectively implement circular solutions that can transform waste burdens like plastic into raw materials for our construction, um, that's what we focused on developing and commercializing in Hong Kong, where we take plastic waste that currently is not recycled. Uh, Hong Kong's recycling rate for plastic is 11%. That means 89% of all the plastic that we collect ends up in landfills. And as you see, those landfills generate significant amounts of carbon emissions. As plastic degrades, it releases methane. Methane is 26 times more potent as a greenhouse gas as carbon dioxide. So it's a real direct source of carbon emissions as well as being a waste burden. So what we do is we reduce the consumption of virgin natural materials that have to be mined and excavated. Uh, and we replace that with waste materials that would otherwise be a burden to Hong Kong and our societies. And what we actually do is produce a concrete product that is stronger than the conventional equivalents. And our solution uh, is able to recycle plastic waste that no one else can, which means we do not compete with existing recyclers, we work with them because we can deal with the 89% that is not recycled. Uh, so we do not compete for the 11% that is currently recycled. We've um, actually quantified our carbon savings uh, under a ISO 14040 life cycle assessment with City University. And we'll, I'll show you the statistics later whereby we can demonstrate and quantify our carbon savings by not only using waste materials instead of virgin materials, but actually drastically reducing transportation distances by having a circular economy model. And what we mean by that is we source our waste only from Hong Kong. We manufacture our products in Hong Kong and our products are used only in Hong Kong. So bringing those raw materials, manufacturing processes and end products all together drastically reduces transportation. And under the life cycle assessment we did, the transportation of the end product actually contributes almost 15% of the carbon footprint. So you can avoid 15% of the carbon footprint of concrete simply by reducing the transportation distances. So that's a, that's a very easy win. So whilst we're making cement more environmentally friendly and reducing its carbon emissions, we can reduce those carbon emissions of the end product even further by adopting circular economy models such as ours. And when we talk about circularity, um, it actually comes in different forms. Um, what I described just now is circularity of raw materials. So that's taking local waste and manufacturing it into a local product. Circularity of the industry is very important as well. Going back to my opening point, buildings are the largest generators of waste. So if buildings can take their waste and turn them into the building materials that they consume for new projects and regeneration, that creates circularity within the building industry itself, which is very important. It becomes sustainable in a true sense. And just as importantly, but uh, not often highlighted, circularity of the product itself is very important. It's no good using waste materials, producing a product that can only be used once and then inevitably becomes a waste burden again. By having a circular model where our bricks are in the same locality as our manufacturing facility, we can actually take our bricks back and we have tested and certified the use of our own waste concrete as recycled aggregates and new materials. So at the end of the life of one of our projects, we're able to take our products back and recycle 100% of that back into new bricks. So the circularity of the product itself is very important, 
that can only be achieved by having this circular model where everything is done in the same place. Um, I've touched upon uh, saving the raw materials, natural raw materials, and uh, the building industry uh, uses, is the largest consumer of natural resources in the world, more than oil and gas. So we need to drastically reduce our dependence on natural resources because natural resources are finite. So just as we're increasing the consumption of concrete to unprecedented levels, we're actually running out of the critical um, raw materials such as sand to make that concrete with. So we have to find these solutions where we're repurposing and recycling uh, waste materials back into uh, raw materials for our concrete consumption. Um, another key aspect of our solution is uh, it's 100% cold and clean. That means we do not heat plastic, we do not melt plastic, and we do not chemically treat plastic. And uh, that's quite important as well because the manufacturing process of any product is usually a significant portion of its um, carbon footprint. So what we do is minimize the amount of energy used, minimize the amount of pollutants and emissions uh, from that process, uh, which directly impacts the environmental um, Im uh, impact and benefits of the, of, of the product itself. And as I mentioned, we, we aim to be zero waste by taking any waste generated from our manufacturing and recycling that back into new bricks. And um, as I mentioned, we can recycle plastics that no one else can, um, and plastic recycling is notoriously difficult. Uh, and the truth in most countries, and if you look at global statistics, is that only a very small proportion of waste plastics are recycled. And that's due to technical hurdles, that's due to financial and economic hurdles and logistics uh, issues as well. Now, when we talk about plastic waste, it's a waste problem, of course it is. Um, it's an environmental problem as well, as I mentioned. It's also a health problem. Uh, plastic waste and microplastics are increasingly being found in human blood. Um, microplastics have a direct impact, a direct negative impact on the ocean's ability to capture and sequester carbon dioxide. The ocean is the largest carbon sink on the planet. And um, so as we inhibit the ability of the, the oceans to capture carbon dioxide because of microplastic pollution, we are reducing and increase, reducing the ability to capture naturally this carbon dioxide and increasing the amount of carbon emissions that we have to deal with uh, by other means. Now to quantify how much plastic we can put into our bricks, um, just one football pitch of uh, eco bricks paving uh, can upcycle 14.3 million plastic bottles equivalent of plastic. Now it, to quantify what 14.3 million bottles looks like, if you place them end to end, they will go from Hong Kong to Shanghai and back and still have some left over. And that's just in one football pitch of paving. So it's a huge amount of waste plastic. And this would be waste plastic that otherwise would be sitting in Hong Kong's landfills that we can repurpose and upcycle. And as I mentioned, we focus on um, aggregates and we uh, work with and we, we're inc incredibly encouraged by um, cement companies such as Green Island Cement to look at waste byproduct industrial um, materials that can be repurposed to replace virgin um, materials, whether it's limestone, whether it's sand, or whether it's aggregates. So what we look at is maximizing the amount and percentage of raw materials consumed um, sourced from waste rather than from virgin sources. Um, and this is a quick snapshot of our, our products. We have two versions. Um, our, our first one is a high strength product where we achieve 48 MPA for a pedestrian grade uh, paving brick. Um, under the LCA, we've calculated a 19% reduction in carbon emissions versus conventional paving bricks, and it has 25% waste materials uh, out of its total raw ingredients. Uh, our second version has 65% waste materials. So the majority of what we put into our bricks is sourced directly from waste, and we reduce the carbon footprint versus conventional bricks by 32%. And we're constantly working to increase that percentage um, because it means we're enabling the diversion of more waste from Hong Kong's landfills, and we're also reducing the environmental impact of our final product. Um, this just um, quantifies how much waste is being generated in Hong Kong. It's, when it comes to plastic waste, it's 2,600 tonnes a day of plastic waste. Um, and whilst everyone knows that Hong Kong and most countries in the world have 
a net zero carbon emission target by 2050. Um, a lot of people are not aware that Hong Kong has a zero waste to landfill target by 2035, a much more near term goal and a very challenging goal. So if you look at the percentage of waste that currently uh, goes to landfill, innovation in repurposing and recycling these waste materials is critical to meeting that zero waste um, target. Um, just a little bit about us. Um, yeah, we're very proud recently to have won first place in the Construction Industry Council Innovation Awards for Sustainability. Uh, last month, we were in Dubai, where we won the Circularity Solution Challenge uh, under the MR Innovation uh, Challenge there as well. So it's very encouraging that the industry is very much focused on innovations that can transform the built environment, not from just being a problem, but actually being part of the solution as well. Um, this is some of the projects we've completed in Hong Kong. So uh, a lot of people will be familiar with the Gold Coast and we've paved the waterfront promenade there with 3.3 tons of mixed plastic waste um, that was sourced from 339 old washing machines. Um, this is the Olympian City uh, project, 2.6 tons of plastic from 269 washing machines repurposed into the yellow bricks uh, that you see there. We've done some more creative projects. So this is a pizza oven at the Gold Coast Yacht and Country Club. Uh, very small uh, project, but still 169 kilograms of plastic waste that would otherwise have simply been sent to landfill. Um, this was a recent uh, project we completed, a sustainability uh, installation at uh, City Walk Mall to promote recycling and sustainability. Um, one ton of plastic waste, but the key um, point about this was that at the end of the uh, project, the bricks weren't simply sent to landfill, we took them back and we'll be either reusing them or recycling them. So it's showing that even in small projects, we can reduce our waste to zero. Um, and this is another design project we completed, 17,000 uh, water bottles uh, used for a feature wall uh, inside an, an office space there. So with innovation, with collaboration, uh, circular solutions such as ours can be realized and can actually show that impact uh, can be made towards um, reducing the burden of waste and carbon emissions generated from the built environment and using it as a positive solution um, for the future. Uh, thank you very much and uh, look forward to any uh, Q&A. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chef Chefin. Um, my my very quick question is um, how you you have some you didn't mention the durability. May I know how is the durability and and price in comparing to the uh, traditional bricks? A good question. So um, we have certified our bricks to grade A under the general specifications for civil engineering works, uh, which means uh, in terms of compressive strength, um, abrasion resistance, slippage resistance, um, water permeability, uh, we hit grade A levels um, under the general specification. So they're as strong, actually stronger than conventional bricks uh, on the market and as durable um, evidenced by their grade A classification under the civil engineering standards. Uh, in terms of price, uh, we price in line with conventional bricks. So we are price competitive whilst obviously having clearer and uh, more importantly quantifiable environmental benefits under the life cycle assessment and also the amount of waste that we divert from Hong Kong's landfills. Oh, okay, but for no I, additional charge. Oh, okay. There, there is a quite attractive solution, but I see your example is most of them are for uh, paving bricks. How about those for building construction? Is there any potential? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, right now we're operating from a small pilot production facility. Um, so we produce just one product. So because of our space limitations, um, when we expand into our large scale um, uh, facility, hopefully later this year, uh, we'll have a much larger machine, which will be, have a much um, wider capacity for different formats of uh, blocks and bricks, um, such as uh, partition blocks, such as curbstones. Um, so we'll develop those products once we obviously have the space and the machinery that's capable of, uh, of doing that. But at oh. the moment, we focus on one product and proving that it is as good, if not better, than the conventional equivalents. And we'll expand the product range as uh, our facility and capabilities expand as well. Okay. I mean, you are very confident that as long as you have land 
and 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 then you could could easily to to collect all those you know, kind of waste bottle. Yeah, because I see that um, even even um, building a foot football ground football mm. ground, mm. you need to have fourteen million million bottle, mm. which is a, a huge mm. huge amount in in collection. Yeah, um, but you, you saw the statistics on how much uh, plastic waste goes to landfill every day. Okay, two thousand six hundred tons. Um, so if I'm using fourteen point three tons, that's there's still a lot more plastic um, to uh, to utilize in Hong Kong. Um, so uh, our concern is not um, on the supply of plastic. It, uh, actually, plastic production and plastic consumption is increasing, even though we're focused on recycling. The actual mm. production of new plastic is increasing. So that means if you don't increase the recycling capabilities, you're going to have, to have more waste to have to deal with. Um, so, so it's just as critical to focus on recycling capacity and capabilities because actually the, the consumption and production of plastic is continuing to increase. Okay, yeah, because you know that collection of plastic is not, not so easy in Hong Kong. And that's right, yeah. And actually, um, there's a lot of focus on the collection of plastic because yeah. that's the first fight that you have to win if you can't if you don't collect it you can't uh, recycle yeah. it yeah. um but we um we work with all of the large uh, waste managers mm -hmm. because they are already collecting that plastic and as the statistics show they're only recycling 11 percent of it yeah. so we're dealing with plastic that is already collected but simply does not have a recycling solution. Uh, okay, yeah, logistic is yeah, always challenging in Hong Kong. Correct. We, we leverage the logistics that already exist, that are already being uh, carried out, but we're simply doing more with what's being collected. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have another question from Mordian is, uh, um, can these eco bricks be used for carriage way for fire for fire trucks? Uh, EVA standard strength, yes. So EVA strength requirement is 45 MPA, as you um, would have seen from um, this slide here. Uh, we've achieved 48 MPA, but that's on a pedestrian size paver. So um, for EVA um, requirements, uh, it's 45 MPA with an 80 mil thickness. We achieve 48 MPA with a 60 mil thickness. So we achieve a higher strength in excess of EVA standards with a thinner brick with less materials utilized. Okay, thank you. Uh, one, one question is not, not so technical is, mm -hmm. um, why do you select Hong Kong to set up a recycled factory? It has not been a easy to set up <laughs> Set up a manufacturing plant in Hong Kong, even it is for environment. And I don't think you are you are Hong Kong, you're do domestic people. I'm not. No. Okay. <laughs> um, Sorry. It's, a, it's a very good question. Um, uh, first of all, I was I was here when obviously COVID hit, so I didn't have an option of going anywhere else, but that's not the answer. Um, it's actually if you if you look at the critical challenges and the critical sol solution that we bring, uh, Hong Kong is almost the perfect place to do this. It has a huge waste generation, especially per capita. It's one of the highest waste per capita ratios in the world. So it generates a lot of waste for every individual that lives here. It also has very, very limited landfill space. And those landfills are filling up much, much faster than uh, they were planned. So solutions have to be found to deal with increasing waste, but li increasingly limited uh, landfills where we can put that waste. So it has a waste problem, it has a space problem, but just as importantly, Hong Kong is a construction economy. Uh, it, it, a, a large portion of Hong Kong's economy is based around real estate and construction. So in terms of consumption of the end product, it's a huge consumer of end product. And if you look at um, the medium and long-term uh, master plans for development in Hong Kong, they are truly huge. Um, you look at the Northern Metropolis uh, redevelopment um, plan, you look at uh, Lantau tomorrow, actually there's a, there will be a huge, huge demand for concrete and other construction materials. Um, and that's just as we are committing to reach zero carbon emissions and zero waste. So again, you have this very unique problem where the, the actual problem is getting larger, but the solutions are not growing at the same rate. So Hong Kong requires solutions to meet its 
long-term targets to supply more sustainable building materials to this huge regeneration and growth in construction. So uh, it has all the perfect problems that this solution can help solve. Okay, it's a good reason, but uh, <laughs> it's not a good news that we have a perfect problem that you, <laughs> you are in mind. Yeah, okay. Anyway, thank you for your time. My yes, pleasure. Thank, thank you. you yeah, Alex. and we look forward to visit your 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 new factory. Absolutely, you'll be very welcome. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank you very much.